Okay, guys, we got Grandma's race car back here. We got the 2013 Subaru Crosstrek. Uh, we knew that when we did brakes here, was it last year, year before? Do you remember, Grandma? I don't remember. Um, I tried to get better rotors than what was on there because they didn't last very long. And she's awful rough on brakes, probably from not driving it. And... When they get all this road salt, what happens is the sliders get um, full of rust and junk and then the brake pads ride and and I think it overheats the rotors, that kind of thing. And uh, we're up here in upstate New York where we get the road salt. You can see the side of this is pretty rough looking, but the paint's in nice shape. She's only got like 60,000 miles. Is this a third set of brakes on this? So they go like 20,000. It's rough on brakes. So last time we bought these uh, slotted rotors and so they're slotted and drilled. I got them from Detroit Axle. We got the premium brake pads and it makes a little bit of a noise. You can kind of hear when you apply the brake, but it'll about throw you through the windshield. They really stop well. Now the problem we got is here in the rear is you see the, the gray color. This is Advanced Auto Parts Lifetime Rotors, they call them, painted rotors. and they only lasted, what, two years, if that? Not quite. And um, look at the shape of them. They're all crusty, rusty, and it sounds like a freight train going down the road, and it shakes like crazy. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to put some um, the same exact thing on the back. And the difference on the rear, obviously, is we got a, a rear brake shoe inside there. I'm going to check the calipers, make sure they're freed also. And compared to both sides, they look the same, uh, just peeking through. So I don't think we have a caliper issue. I just think that, you know, our two years time frame is up. So let's get a start on it. We got the old tiger out here. He's checking things out. No, don't you jump up there. We've been having kitty prints on the cars lately, and I wonder who's doing it. Hmm. All right, so I got a couple tools out. We're going to, these are 19 millimeter lug nuts. I put a jack stand under there. We're on the floor jack. I got a impact here. And we think it's charged enough. When we put this on number three, I think these wheel lugs are supposed to be torqued at 88 foot pounds. And I like to have a, a bucket handy so our parts don't come off. Sometimes these rims tend to get stuck on there. This isn't. But I usually hit it if so. And we're not jacked up very high here, but see the stands right under the frame member. And we got about 50 degrees out here now. It's supposed to get up to 60 today. I don't know if you can see this here. But we got. Pretty decent weather. Yeah, you can't see too well here now. I moved you. See the corrosion? That's pitted way in there. See that? That's deep. And uh, see if we can see what the pads look like. Not much. Um, so what we got to do is we got to take this caliper off. We got to take the caliper bracket off. And they both look to be 14 millimeter. And we'll have to see how, well, it's kind of loose. So maybe we can get this drum off without backing off the uh, emergency brake. That would be nice. And let's get out. We got some Napa sockets here, some Evercraft. I like them pretty well. Little set 14 is what it looks like. And it is. Hi, Tiger. You going to help me do some brakes? I want to see what these pads look like. I got Grandma sitting over here. That's Dawson's grandmother, my mother. And I worry about her driving. And being a senior, you go to the old Subaru place and it's hundreds, tends to be thousands of dollars to get your car worked on. 
See, I did this last time. See the NICs on the bolts. We're in a New York Rust. And so there's the caliper. I don't have a pry bar out here. See how loose that is. Use my, yeah, that'll come right off. Look at the corrosion on the piston there. Look at that. Rust. Looks like that's grass up in here. Maybe she's been doing some off-roading. I'll clean all this up. What you want to inspect is make sure that the seal around the piston is in good shape. I'll probably clean that before I push that back. So I'll just set this up on top for now. And then we'll go ahead and take the caliper bracket off so that we can remove that to get to the rotor. They're only 14 millimeters, so I don't know what the torque setting is. Nobody torques them properly. Just tighten them up. They don't back off. But we're saving grandma some money, I think. We got roughly a hundred bucks, I believe. A little bit over a hundred bucks. And two, two rotors and pads. And they are ceramic, the quiet ones. And they are, what do they call them? Limited lifetime. A lot of corrosion on that one. Just two years time, the bolt has about wore out here. We get a major amount of salt on our roads. Yeah, see that? I'm gonna get a different socket. This is a 12 point, I'll grab a six point. All right, I got a uh, six point impact socket on it, a swivel half inch ratchet, and I got that bolt loose and it was tough it's kind of rounded over let me see if I can get it there get that off in there go back to the smaller 12 point this uh, rust is terrible um, what I'm gonna do though is just show you one side I probably won't show you both sides um, but I want to take care of grandma's car. I want to make sure she can stop every time she comes over or a few times she comes over. I drive somewhere and I, hey, what's that rattle? What's that noise? We do have another problem under here we're going to look at, right? She had a heat shield that was rattling like crazy. Drove me nuts. And I reached up under there and it fell off. And then I got looking and I said, boy, it sounds kind of noisy. So while I was looking under there, I'll show you in a second. And I, I think it's a, a problem for all of them is um, the leak. See these pads, they're a little bit more than 50%. So they're not shot, but that rotor sure shot. But see what the rust does to these? You want to check your slider, see how good that moves, your pins. They move good. There's no problem with this. Other than look at the corrosion that starts on these. So what we're going to do is I'll pop these off. I'll put anti-seize on the bolts, put them back in. They just snap in this rubber. And then I take these probably, you can't even move these pads. Yeah, they're set right up in there. So what I do is I, these even have stainless clips in it, but it's frozen right up. I take, take them out. And I run a flat file in there and clean it up. Put a little anti-seize, put the new clip on. It comes with new clips, put the new pads in. Put a little grease on them. And then if they chatter, like these have a backing plate. If they didn't have a backing plate, I'd put a disc brake quiet on it. Usually that red. And these have a sensor pin that's not touching. So they didn't squeal. But you go down the road, it's like, uh, 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 you can't even stop. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Awesome. Um, what I was going to say, though, is if you pop this plug out, you can reach in 
with a screwdriver and back off the adjustment, which is on the bottom here, and it will turn your shoes. The inside of this is in good shape. Very little ridge. And the rotor itself doesn't look too bad, but look at the shape of that thing. There's chunks right out of it. Terrible. Oh, look at this. Whoa. So it was hitting here. Major skip. I don't know if you can see that good. Yeah, I think so. But that is really thick. I take something here and that's, uh, look at that. Look at that rotor falling apart. Get a screwdriver and probably flake all that off. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Wow. I think they've been on there a couple years. Yeah, two years. They look like they've been on there 10 or 15. Well, their car is 10 years old now. So then y'all want to look at the, the brake shoes. And they're in good shape. This only parking brake, which she never uses. Just make sure they're free and they move. And uh, I did put new backing plates on this at the same time. Remember that? We did brakes. Yep. Did backing plates because these were all rotted off and making noise. And I did new wheel bearings. So this car, we've done quite a bit to it. But while I'm discussing this, like I said, on this caliper, I want to clean this corrosion off of that. And then I want to push that back, make sure it goes back freely, and clean that up. And I'll show you the new parts here. But the next project, if I can get you down under here. There, I'll get you down under here better. Is it sounds like a Volkswagen. See the, the gaskets rusted out on the flange. But look at the bolts. I mean, there's no shape to them. So I'm going to have to grind them off. And I bought a gasket. But I wasn't able to locate bolts, so I'm not sure what the bolts are because I couldn't look them up. And which, if you look closely there, see that gasket's blown right out. I'm going to try to do a gasket. If we can't do a gasket and flange and fix that, I want to cut the pipe and put like a two-inch uh, pipe in place and a couple clamps and or weld around it. And otherwise, the mufflers. I think it was almost 200 bucks. And then for this front pipe, it goes all the way up and it's part of the converter. And so I think she's going to spend about 400 bucks in parts. Well, I think it's a little more than that. And then we got to still get it out of there. So I'm going to try to do the least expensive. And if that works, it may last the lifetime of the converter. Let me get the brakes out and show you. Okay, this is a Detroit Axle. I've been using these for about four years now, and I like them. They, they come on time, they come packaged nice, they're never damaged, they're all together. Um, you know, just, I'm super happy. That's a part number for the 2013 Subaru Crosstrek. They package them, they cardboard between them, they bag them, and the pads come in the same box. But here's the pad. They come with the stainless slide clips. They come with the grease. And here's the ceramic pads. They have a backing on them, so you don't need to disc brake quiet. And these are grooved to help clean them. And the part number on this is always the wrong side. There we go. Part number for the 2013 rear is that. And like I said, I'm super happy with the quality. And I'm fussy on brakes. If it starts shaking, I gotta do brakes, period. Some people go until they, you can't even stop. These rotors, check out that machining. These are like amazing. Um, I put a whole set on my, I'll show you here. I put a set on my car. See that? Um, I put a set on my 150 over there. I put them on the front of Grandma's, and she's been happy for, I don't know if that's been a year. It's been on there a while, right? Probably a year, yeah. Yeah, and you're quite happy with the way it stops, and this is going to be, like, awesome now. So, I got out a couple tools. I got a uh, uh, tool to remove and push back the piston. Not remove, but push back the piston. And But I want to take... And clean that rust off 
So I brought out some, a wire brush. I brought out a brass brush and some scrapers and some files. And I want to clean up um, the caliper housing, the bracket, and knock them pads out. And like I said, the pads are still good shape, but we, we're not going to reuse them. That don't make any sense. So I got a little work to do here, but let me uh, wire brush this off. You don't need to see that. But I want to chip all this off because when I push this piston back, I don't want it to tear the uh, dust boot. So I'll get that cleaned up. And then I'll set this tool in there like this. And then just tighten it up with a wrench and it pushes the piston back. You can use a um, pliers or something. Just be careful you don't tear that boot. Alright, what I did is I chipped off some big rust spots there. And I'm just worried about damage in the boot so I sprayed it lubed that up a little bit this is always out in the weather so I'm not too concerned with it we'll see if it goes back easily or not if it goes back with trouble then the uh, caliper starting to seize up and then it's time to get rid of it so I put that it tool in there like that and then I just tighten and if I go the correct direction and then that'll just push it back easy I've done this with big pliers and C clamps and everything but it's a little more awkward if I have the tool might as well use it and this going back pretty easy I don't feel there's anything wrong with a caliper I don't know if you can see that yeah I guess you can so this doesn't take any pressure at all to turn that. And so we want to push that back when it's back all the way, which it looks like it is, when this tool stops. And it did. Then uh, that's all I got to do on this side. And let me get a wire brush and clean up the rest of that. See, the piston doesn't go all the way back in anyway. So this little portion I was a little worried about, it doesn't go inside the boot anyway. But right here on the surface where it touches the back, it's got a little buildup of junk. I want to make sure this is good and flat when I tighten it up. Take a file and get this as flat as you can. It's just that white corrosion you get on aluminum. I want to make sure that this tightens up square. You see there's a chunk right there. I just want to make sure it's seated square when you tighten it up. Yeah, it's coming right off. So, like I said, we're up here in the rust belt. What I used to do with my 250 and 350 uh, diesel trucks, I'd uh, take the brakes apart every year, the disc brakes, clean and lube the sliders, put them back together. I wouldn't have to buy any parts. It's just the rust gets in there so things can't move now that we got this pretty clean I want to just uh, double check all the mating surfaces make sure there's no rust or debris so it tightens up squarely and then make sure it's clean and then uh, like I said the, the brake shoes are in good shape you know, all the springs are intact, everything's working. So I'm going to take the rotor and I'm going to go ahead and put that on to keep more debris out of here. And there's a locator hole. This one has two. Yeah, I guess I had two. There's one here, so it doesn't matter. Just I'll put it on the same way, which is this way. Yep, that's how they line up with it old marks the other thing you always want to do which i probably should stress here is you got to look at the edge of your axle bearing here this has got grease on it yeah that's grease but just make sure that there's no debris in there where your rotor won't go up you know your drum and rotor combination won't go up tight Yeah, so 
I think what I'm going to do, because this is a new bearing I put in like a year or two ago. I think it, because there's a little rust formation, I'm going to get some anti-seize out and put on this right now. All right, I got some, uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of moving parts here, but got a little Permatex anti-seize here. You don't need gobs of it, but. It's still chilly from being in the unheated garage, but I just want to run it around here so it doesn't seize onto the rotor. And then it's also a good time to go put some right on your lug, right on your um, mating surfaces of the of the back of this, and the studs here you don't need gobs of it you just I just don't want the rust in there so there's that and then we'll go ahead and set the this comes without the oil finish on it and that's what else I like about these is most rotors you get they have the grease on them and these do not so I don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning and let's see here we'll go back to that locator hole Let's see where it went. It's gone now that I cleaned it, so that's good. Let's see how she fits. Really nice. And then prior to um, putting the, the wheel back on, what I'm going to do is I'll go pull the emergency brake on, the parking brake, and see how many clicks. And if it's several clicks before it's touching, like this feels like it's got to be tightened up a little bit, but I don't want them so tight that they ride all the time. Um, and then I got to take, they don't give you one, which is kind of odd and a brand new drum, but they don't, they don't give you a plug, but I want to put the plug in while I'm thinking about it. Keeps the debris out of there, but we may have to take that out and adjust it with a screwdriver. So now... I'm going to go work on this. We're going to take the brake pads, mounts in this way. The uh, clip is on the front, whether that matters. This is a little squealer. Grandma's not going to get to that point where they're going to be that low because we check them. Look how tight they're in there. Wow. Sledgehammer. So we'll get this out. We got all the kitties out here today helping. Three of them. Okay. Now we're going to pop these out. And I like to just look things over. I don't see anything wrong here other than corrosion. We'll rip them out of there. We need some little help here. We're going to put the new ones in that come with it. But to make sure they fit in there well, we'll probably get out a little brush wheel. Let me show you the corrosion we get. Look at that. If you can see that. There's a lot of corrosion. So that if I go to put the new uh, stainless slides in, they won't go all the way to the bottom. So this is what I do is I'll take it in on the vise but I take a file, I go like this and clean it real well. Some people use a brush wheel, but I think a file works great because it's flat. And then I want to take these pins. I got to work that rubber back so we don't hurt the rubber there. But see these pins? That has a pretty good amount of grease on it. It's a little thick, so I might clean that out, put in fresh grease. And I'll come back and we'll mount this up. All right, I took the uh, file and cleaned this all up well, as good as I can. And uh, I took the uh, pins out, put some lube on them, made sure they had the lube anyway, but made sure they're moving free. And um, now what we're going to do, put a little dab of grease down the bottom here with those slider fit in just lube this up just a little bit 
won't hurt anything. Definitely help. Get a little bit of lube on that. And we're going to take these stainless sliders. Probably should got a little baby paintbrush, but it's only grease. And then take our sliders and set them in there. And once they snap in place, once they snap in place, in the right direction, snap them in there. Sometimes you gotta bend these little tabs over right here, these four. Take a little hammer and little tool and just tap them so make sure the clips stay in place. But usually they snap right in there nicely. You want them to bottom out. And then you tap them past the side there. And I'll do that and uh, we'll go ahead and bolt them up. All right, it's easier once I set the, I have two hands and I set the camera down good here. But uh, what we got is they snap in like that. I take a little hammer. They already, they're already bent over, but I take a little hammer, a little baby one. This happens to be a build and grow. When Dawson was little, he used to do all them build and grow projects and they gave him a hammer. That was pretty cool. And now he's big and he's got his own hammer. Check out his channel. Dawson Robinson he recently did the same thing as me doing a maple sap boil but see I just bend them tabs over a little bit and what that does is it just confirms that these won't move fall out of there they probably wouldn't anyway but I like to bend them over the edge I'm not, there's no directions with these but I'm assuming there's no problem doing that just bend the tabs a little bit. And then we take our new, we line this up in proper orientation like this. We take our inside pad, mounts this direction, slide that in there. And I just want to dry fit it first. Make sure it fits right inside the sliders nice here. And a little bit crooked here. You can see all the rust down here. I wish we were in Florida sometimes. Sometimes I just take a little baby hammer here and just give it a tap. I don't know, you probably can't see that, but I just tap the backing. There. Now it's in square. It fits in like that. I'll pop these back out to set them on there probably because I want to get a little bit of lube on them also. Just want to make sure they fit in good. That tells you that these are bottomed out on your plates all the way. Okay, now I've just taken a little bit of the same grease. This little dab will do you. A little bit down inside that slider. While I can reach it. I don't think it's necessary. If you put too much, it probably attracts dirt. You probably, because you're stainless steel, don't have to do anything. And then I took my bolts. See how much rust is on them. But I took them and I, I greased them up. So we set this right over. Get it down in there. Get your bolt started. If I go ahead and put the pads in the uh, caliper, it's called a loaded caliper. Sometimes you don't put them in exactly in the right spot and then you can't fit it over the rotor. So um, that's why I usually do this. Then I can put the pads exactly where they need to be. And make sure you start them by hand. I'm not going to use a gun on this anyway. They're only little 14 millimeters. Tighten them up and then I do have my air ratchet out here. I could probably do that with my battery ratchet. Be a little quicker. Does really good. I don't know how much torque this has, but it goes pretty good. Now I'm going to torque them up because they're like 14 millimeter head. I'm going to torque them up about 
maybe 40 foot pounds. They don't, and they don't need too much. And then these are knuckle breakers, so. <clears throat> Click. Okay, so they're on, and then our pins slide. They feel pretty good. And then just check your clips. Make sure they stay down there. And then we take our pads. Now the difference in the pads, inside and outside, is the inside one has the wear indicator. And they are different. This rotor turns forward, so the front part would be the bottom. So if I set the pad in like that, I'm going to want to use this one instead of the other one. And then this portion would touch when the brake pad gets down real thin. Set them babies in there. They're hard to see, but hear that click? That's in. Your outside pads are the same, and there's no indicator on them. Set that in there. Sounds like the kitties are in my tools. And then the pads are on. Then we just, uh, like I said, I cleaned this up. So now I want to take them bolts and get a little bit of lube on them. And these I had anti-seize on from last time, so they're probably fine anyway, but get a little bit of lube on them. And then you take your caliper I don't want to jump the gun here. I want to be for sure these pads are in all the way. This inside one sounds like it is. But what I do is I go like this. Confirm that it's in all the way. This one don't look it. There, see that? Little baby hammer doesn't hurt a thing. You're not hitting on the pad surface. And that looks like it's in all the way. And then I just check. See that? There's no tension on it. And then... We take your caliper, and we already cleaned them surfaces, so we're good on that. Make sure that you don't twist your brake hose like that. Make sure your brake hose stays straight. Bring that in. Push your pins in a little bit, because there's a little bit of a spring load on them with the grease in there. And then we just take our newly lubed bolts, set them in. They're 14 millimeter also. Sometimes these... Um, pins you have to put a wrench on them because they want to turn in there but we'll see if they turn if so i'll have to run grab a looks to be about a 15 millimeter i don't know exactly but let me get these in see if they tighten up just take make sure that your caliper can move freely and then i'll grab Sometimes if you use your ratchet, your, uh, this is a battery ratchet, but use your ratchet, they'll go in without the uh, pin sliding, turning, like that. See that? Tighten right up, and then, oh, that one's turning. There. It stopped. So now, I just got to finish tightening them, hand check them. I'm sure there's a torque setting that we're not going to check. I just want them tight enough. Some people get carried away and slam them. Should I do like everybody else does? Click. Now this pin keeps sliding. It keeps turning. So I'm going to grab a wrench. It looks to be about a 15 millimeter, maybe 16. All right. I got an Evercraft here. It's a uh, 17 millimeter. And see, that'll fit over the inside. And then I want to confirm they're going to be tight enough, you know. <clears throat> the bottom one's the one that turned the most. Can't get if I get a wrench in there. There we go. Just want to make sure they're tight enough. I'm surprised they don't. They don't use like a a lock nut or. Lock washer, a lock washer. Okay, guys, so uh, now the next thing I want to do, we got our, our rotor on. If our lug nuts weren't the acorn style, but a standard lug nut, I'd run that on there, and that would hold the, 
the rotor fast tight against this. See that? That's the only complaint is if I had that thread, I gotta look up the thread, and I could put a nut on there, I'd tighten that rotor up flush to the bearing, the axle, I'd go in and pull a couple clicks. If I let this come out like it does, the brake probably will feel right and it may not be. So I'm gonna turn this down, see how, it's a slight drag. Make sure you don't put any oil or grease on it um, for my fingerprint. It's right here at the bottom is the adjustment. Let me go hunt up a nut, see if I can find a nut, that thread. All right, what I did is I put several washers on there, and I put the acorn nut back on. And what that did, just one nut, it draws that up tight. So it's tight against the, uh, see how even that is? And what that does is it ensures that this is in all the way. I want to go in and pull on the emergency brake and see how many clicks. I usually like about four clicks. You don't want it to drag. And it goes about, about three clicks and I feel tension so I don't think I'm going to adjust them any tighter because when you have them tight they don't move and when parts don't move they rust so they can tip out they go out they, they move out about that far and three clicks it's perfect so now we've got we checked our, our brake shoes they work fine and let me go put them on again just to show you. See, now that I applied it, see this? I didn't show you all. Let me go pull that on. Now I come out here. Look at that. I can't even move it. So now you know your brakes work. So the e-brake parking brake is off. We uh, lubed our bolts. We cleaned our slides. We put new pads, new sliders, new rotor. We lubed up our pins. Everything's on and tight. Now I'm just going to pop off this lug nut, take off our washers. We made sure that our, our rubber plug, can you see that? Yep, our rubber plug's in there, our adjustment plug. And then get my junk out of the way. And we got one side of Grandma's race car done. Now I'm assuming, you know what that spells, everything on the other side is the same thing. But just to, uh, Recap, these are the stainless sliders that were in there. There's no wear on these. There's a little bit of, you know, they're stainless steel, so they don't really wear. The brake pads, they look terrible. You see the backing starts buckling up, but we had plenty of wear surface left. And the wear goes down to that mark right there. See how much we have left? So there's still probably 30,000 miles. There's a little chipping out there. But these probably could have stayed on there a couple more years. But when you see a rotor, it looks great on the outside. This is the advanced painted rotor. So these, I think we paid an extra 30 bucks for. They said they, they last a whole lot longer. But when they do this, I don't know if you can see how much that is. If I had a caliper, I'd say that's about 20 thousandths. That's quite a jump. So when you apply the brakes, it went because these old pads you know they're nice and smooth and they drop and uh so this is the best way to go and get grandma back safely on the road under a budget we got a hundred bucks in this she's going to make me some lunch and uh we're going to have her going we're going to go and do the other side it's going to go a few minutes quicker because i don't have to film it but uh if you like the content guys remember to subscribe and uh remember to keep your grandma's wheels on the going here We'll see you on the next video, guys.